So um, my my objective here, rather than trying to isolate an edge of each of these panels to measure, I'm actually going to intersect them. So it's basically as if I take a piece of paper and I draw a line across it like this. And I, I define where that line is in all cases. And then I say, how long is that line? Because I can't identify if this edge of the paper or that edge of the paper or this edge of the paper is always going to be either index one, two, three, or whatever. Okay, so that's, that's the gist of what we're doing. And really what that looks like um, in simple terms is I'm gonna draw, and I'm only gonna draw it around one building for now, but eventually we're gonna have to do it for the whole site. Um, but, ooh, what, what do I have on? Ortho, no. Um, so I'm just gonna draw a big surface like this and then lift it up just a little bit so that it sits off the ground just enough for me to get an intersection through each of those surfaces. Okay. Yes. I have a question about your number plane. It's the one that is attached to it, the height on the left. Yeah. Uh, what value for that section? This one? It doesn't matter because I disconnected it. You can delete that one. That so that number slider was for if you want to analyze one face. So I was trying to show you kind of you know the false assumptions that we can make by not analyzing enough information. So what was attached to the B, the B, B, F? This one, yes. Yes, yes, I did. Okay, so um, now we kind of have to go back, you know, back a little bit and decon or uh, create the intersection curve, which we're then going to analyze. Okay, so notice how we're, we're doing a lot of kind of circular reasoning, and really what that's based upon is if you notice, everything flows back through these nodes. Every single one of them goes from this node to this node where we get all the individual surfaces, which we're analyzing a lot, and then it feeds into the operators, which are happening over here. So make things a little bit clearer here. Slide that a little bit further out. This one is a bottleneck. This is what we're analyzing. So um, without further ado, I guess, uh, let's actually do the intersection. And as you would probably guess, the intersect command is going to be under the intersect panel, or intersect tab, sorry. Under, I think it's physical. Yeah. So, BREP, BREP. So, it says solve intersection events for two BREPs. So, this is what we have, right? The information that we have is we have uh, the individual BREP surfaces, which is 16 individual surfaces. Then we have um, the surface that we just created, which now we have to reference. So, I go under Params and I go under ge uh, Geometry, and I'm going to drop in, I'll put, make this one a BREP. And I right click, set one BREP, and there it is. And I'm going to go back to I'm going to put that one on CRVs. Oh no, sorry, not CRVs. I'm going to put this on a hidden layer so that I don't have to see it. So I'll just put it on the boundary curve, sure. Why not? <coughs> okay, so um, with the end in mind, right, we want to find intersections of those surfaces, and I'll just kind of quickly show you. Basically, you plug in each, the, the package or the list of individual surfaces, and then we plug in basically the BREP that we want to intersect it with. And so what we get here, if you look very, very closely, is a series of curves around the perimeter where it intersects all of the edges. 
Okay, so nothing new here. All we did is we went under uh, intersect and physical, and we got beer at beer at. And then we, uh, oops, and then we um, referenced in the surface that we created and we plugged it in. And that's it. That's all we needed. Okay, so do, you, do I need to give you guys a moment to get caught up with that or can we just keep rolling on? All right, I'll give you a minute. So did yeah. you just make that surface right now, the horizontal one? I did, yeah. I made it in Rhino. What I'm, so maybe what might be a little confusing here is the intent. Uh, overall, the master plan. Um, you guys should be aware that right now I'm only working on one building. What I'm trying to prepare for with this definition is that I can just draw one giant surface across the entire site that's going to analyze every single edge of every single building that we've made. And for all hundred buildings, that's quite a task. So I'm simulating that right now with one building. Yes? Would you do that all at once or should we do it building by building? All at once. So, even, even like the walls too? Yep. Yeah, so the objective here is to make it fully automated. It'll take some time to compute. You know, that's going to be a lot of work that it has to do. Um, but the objective here is all we have to do is extrude the surfaces, the walls, then um, cut, analyze the edge, and then map the thing in based on the length of the edge for every single building all at once. Yep, they would only count what's being intersected. But the mapping algorithm will not work for that because we have to remove the top and bottom for the way that we programmed our mapping algorithm. And is that because it also takes into account like the edges that are on the top and bottom? Well, I guess I wouldn't really think that. Um, it does, so that the, it's not dependent upon the edges what it is dependent upon is when we did the extrusion and made it a solid, so for a simple rectangular plan, that means that it has six sides. We could not control, because of the limitations of how it assigns the faces, we could not control how to select just the walls numerically by index. So what we had to do is just eliminate the problem with selecting it by index. And instead of selecting it by index, just create the extrusion that doesn't have a top and a bottom then you don't have to worry about omitting any of the list at all. So it just shows you information in numeric numbers. Right. It it just it simplifies it simplifies how many steps you have to take to get to the desired package of information. But this is only if all the buildings have the same window structure, right? So yeah, so that's that's a good question. Um, this, so the question was, if you couldn't hear it on the video, is you know this is only for if all the buildings have the same window structure. So yes, right now, especially, yes. Um, what I will show you is how to build in variation. Um, and so we, we're going to start off with, well, how do I change per side how many subdivisions there are? Then we're going to move on to, well, what if I want a completely different system on a random assortment of buildings, which I'm going to jump back. That's where we move away from this. We start moving into new geometry and more logic mapping. And we're going to look at, well, how do you reduce and replace with new definitions within one larger system? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually simpler than you would think. I, I could kind of jump to the side real quick and show you guys the basics of it on the grid later on if you'd like to give you a preview. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here because it's about to hit 10 minutes, um, and then we'll move on.